Right now, I'm joined by Blue Jackets General Manager Yarmo Kekalainen. He has been a busy man. Yarmo, you always tell me that there's no offseason when you're looking to make your team better. And obviously, you've proven that just in the last couple of days, acquiring two defensemen, Ivan Provorov from the Philadelphia Flyers via trade, and now doing a signing trade with Damon Severson of the New Jersey Devils. When you look at these two guys, what stood out to you about them where you felt that they were going to be big pieces of what you needed to change on the blue line. We do the, uh, the pro scouting obviously uh, regularly. And, and we uh, had uh, Ivan Provorov very high on our list in the draft. Not, it's not, not so long ago when both him and Zach Wierenski were drafted in the same draft. And uh, so you, you go back in your, in your evaluations quite far uh, Severson's obviously been in the league for a longer time and and he's been a solid top four defenseman in the NHL for for quite a quite a long time already and and he was our number one target on the uh, on the free agent list and and we were able to get ahead of it by uh, making a trade in New Jersey sign and trade so that he doesn't get to uh, the UFA market on July 1 we wanted to be aggressive on both of these uh, players so that uh, you know the Provorov move was uh, made so that if we have to get to the free agency on July one, the, and and there's always a lot of competition, especially for defensemen, or if any any centermen ever get to that point, and and uh, you know even though you have a good case for them, good solid contract offer, there's there's a lot of other teams that make that bit too, and you could uh, end up empty-handed. We didn't want to do that, so we made the trade for Provorov to to make sure that we end up with at least one good top four defenseman, and then we were able to. To convince um, uh, Damon Severson to uh, to come to us via sign and trade, uh, we had permission from New Jersey to talk to his representatives and and Damon himself and his his uh, fiance and convince them that this is a great place for him. I think there's a lot of similarities with the organizations and and where they're at. Where New Jersey's ahead of us uh, in the process that they went through, missing the playoffs quite a few times, and we've missed them now too many times. And but we have. Some talented players um, growing up in our organization. We're ready to take the next step, and I think these two players will help us tremendously to uh, to take that next step. Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, you reached out to him right away, and he's the only team that you're the only team that he talked to, and then he ends up signing. I know money's involved in it, obviously, but what other things excited him? What what was your pitch to Damon Severson? Was it just that? We have a young team that expects to get back in the playoffs and you're going to be a big part of helping that. I think just, just by being healthy, we will take a big step next year. Now adding these two players, will take an even bigger step. And I think that he sees our forward group, a talented forward group that uh, is going to grow and, and get better. And, and the need for a defenseman and big, in a big role, any proud player in the national hockey league wants to have a, have a big role on the team and big part of team growing and, and making the team better. And, and uh, Damon is uh, also going to bring some leadership into our group. He's experienced. He's an assistant uh, captain in, in New Jersey. And and we need that veteran leadership as well. And and I think he sees that big role, big opportunity for him to grow with our group and get back into the playoffs. Also, with these two players, you're able to acquire them and you didn't have to give up really any of your draft picks, if you will, because the Provorov trade... Uh, you ended up using that number one pick that you acquired from Los Angeles at the end of the season. And the Severson deal, you used a third-round pick that you picked up in that trade with Seattle for Oliver Bjorkstrand last summer. How important was that to you to get through all of this, to be able to add two players of that caliber and still basically have your picks intact as you go into this draft in a couple of weeks? Yeah, I think sometimes that's that's why you uh, collect the uh, the draft capital and and that's what we talked about when we made the trade uh, where we sent Oliver Bjorkstrand to Seattle as hard as, as it was we got something for him instead of getting into a situation with the cap that we have to unload somebody and and in the worst case scenario pay for somebody to take a good player which has happened quite a bit in the in the league right now so we had two two extra picks third and fourth pick from that trade um we almost uh, traded uh what we got for Kavrikov to get uh, Provorov and uh, now now one of those picks to get the rights to uh, talk to Severson and get the uh, sign and trade done. So um, it's important to have those extra picks if you want to make moves like this. And 
and we're still going to make some some uh, good draft picks this this summer. With it. we're in Buffalo right now, watching the combine and and uh, the testing, and and we're really excited about the third overall pick coming up because it's going to be a hell of a player for us. And when you look back to last year's draft, that's when you loaded up on defense. David Yurichek, you took in the first round. Denton Matejchuk, you took in the first round. And even though Severson has a long contract, Provorov right now has two years on his deal. Uh, when you're putting this all together, how important was it also to to get a bridge between you know uh, your prospects that you have coming defensively and to get the experience that you need right now so you can be a better defensive club? Well, this gives, gives us an opportunity not to rush the uh, the defensemen. That's the uh, goalies and defensemen. Those are the hardest positions to crack, crack in in the NHL. And you cannot be in that position and, and learning in the NHL. It gets overwhelming and, and it, can, it can get real hard on a, on a young defenseman to, uh, to play in the NHL, get exposed, lose his confidence. So we don't want to rush any of our top prospects. We have Spozil, we have Matejchuk, we have Giricek. Those guys are going to be real good NHL players at the right time. We don't want to rush their process. That They'll get their opportunity when they're ready. It could be sooner rather than later, but we're not going to have to rush them now. And There's still going to be a lot of opportunities in our lineup in the top six for, for those players to, to show us that they're ready. And if they're not, then, then so be it. We're going to be patient with them and we're going to help them grow and, and mature and, and uh, they'll be a big part of our future. As you mentioned, you are in Buffalo for the Combine right now and having a chance to uh, interact a little bit with some of the players that may be available at number three overall. Um, you know, pretty much the number one guy has been determined. There's a question about who might be there at number three. How much are you just trying to uh, get to know guys in a very short window of time and, and get that personality factor? I know you know what they can do on the ice, but to get that personality factor – to uh, put into the final decision as to who you'll take based on who's available. Yeah, it's important. And I like to watch the testing. I like to watch their compete. I'd like to know how they're, how they're built and what their potential may be to, to grow once they, these guys are still young men and, and uh, many of them a lot less mature than some of the others. Some, some guys here are uh, young, but already men and some guys are almost still boys. And, and you can see that there's a lot of room for growth and, and um, you know that's that's part of the uh, the difficulty of uh, drafting players at 17, 18 years of age. But um, you know we've interviewed all the top guys. We had dinner with uh, Adam Fantilli on Wednesday. We had dinner with uh, with uh, Leo Carlson yesterday, and we'll have dinner tonight with Will Smith. So we'll get to spend a little more time with those guys to to see where they're at in their lives and get to know them and. And uh, you know, again, make him to make him relax a bit, rather than coming into the uh, fifteen-minute interview and grilling him with questions and having our team psychologist there. That can be a little, little um, uh, nerve nervous time. But uh, but uh, you know, once we get him to dinner and choke around a little bit and get him to relax, we'll get to know him a lot better. So tomorrow is a big day for the testing. They they had some max VO twos this morning that we watched the the effort of of the players when they grind through that, uh, that test, which is probably the hardest one for them. But um, uh, this is a good time to get to know these kids and get to know what they're all made of. And, and I, I particularly like watching the testing tomorrow to see their compete level and how focused they are and, and how they're built. Even though you've made such a big overhaul on the blue line to this point, I, I'm pretty sure I know what your answer to this question is going to be, but are you done at this point? No, we're not done. I mean, we've always talked about, uh, you know, centerized position is the other um, important position. And it's so hard to get a centerman. We'll get one in the draft now. And, um, you know, to trade for one is, is extremely hard. Um, and the, usually the good ones never get to the uh, UFA market. But uh, we have some good ones growing in our system too. Ken Johnson still has the... Potential to play a center ice position in the National Hockey League. Cole Sillinger is going to be a good one. You know, we got Sean Corrali, who's a very dependable player for us in both ends of the ice. And, of course, our captain, Boone Jenner, and and, and the very talented Jack Roslovic. And if he gets more consistent with his game, though, those guys are good center icemen in the, uh, in the National Hockey League. But, uh, you know, we're always looking to um, 
to uh, to strengthen those positions, center ice and and defense and goaltending being the being the uh, the keys to success in the National Hockey League. But uh, no, we're not done. We don't uh, we don't get to uh, enjoy the off season like uh, like the maybe the coaches and and the players do. And and players are working out all the time now too. They get two two weeks off after the season and then they're back to the grind. I think they. would much rather be on the ice and playing games and then going through uh, the hard off-season workouts that they're doing right now. I thought for sure you were going to say you don't get to take off like I do. I thought that's exactly where you were going. <laughs> that goes without saying. <laughs> hey, you mentioned all of those guys at center. One guy you didn't mention was Dmitry Voronkov, who's finally come over from Russia. Um, and, you know, obviously he's going to get a chance to compete in the training camp, but you had Kirill Marchenko who came over last year had to start the year in Cleveland, but certainly made a spot for himself uh, before the end of the season when he got a chance. Uh, how excited are you about Voronkov in it, a bottom six center who can play really gritty in a physical game? Yeah, very excited. Um, he's he's played a lot of wing too, both center and wing. He's he's huge. He's uh, physical. He's got a little bit of a meanness to him and his game. I think our fans are going to love him. A uh, very, very competitive guy and uh, plays an aggressive style, gets a lot of goals in the dirty areas, uh, gets into the blue paint, gets into the goalie's face, de- deflects pucks and and scores most of his goals within like six feet of the uh, the blue paint. Um, you know, there's going to be a learning curve there, just just like with Marchenko, and, but he could make an immediate impact in our club. That's, uh, that's definitely something that... Uh, that we're looking forward to. We're not counting on it because there could be could be an adjustment period, and we're going to take it very patiently with him. But I think he's an ingredient that we've been missing in our lineup, and and uh, he's going to be a great addition to uh, to our group. I know you still have uh, coaching issues to to get settled as you go through here. Uh, where are you on the goaltending coach, especially since, as you mentioned a few minutes ago, that that position and especially a reemergence of Elvis Merzlikens at this point is very important for this team to get where you want it to be. I think we're fairly close to making a decision and, and getting getting uh, all the pieces together. And, you know, we're confident that Elvis is going to bounce back. He's a talented goalie who's shown not not just for one year, but several years that he's one of the top goalies in the league when he's on top of his game. And now he's got to get back there. First of all, he's got to stay healthy. That's that's number one thing. And he's going to get pushed by Tarasov, who's a very, very talented goalie. And, and he's shown what he can do in the National Hockey League as well. But for both of them, I think the, this offseason is huge so that they build their strength and stamina so that they, they can stay healthy and, and um, you know, showcase their skills on, on consistent basis because, because they're uh, in top shape and, and healthy. All right, I have one more thing to ask you, and even though you said you're not done yet, at this point, as we talk right now, uh, what would you say to the Blue Jackets fan? Why should they be excited about this team the way you have it right now? Well, I think that uh, just just by getting on track and healthy, we're, we're going to be better. But now now we've solidified our back end, and which was probably our biggest problem last year. We gave up too many goals, and I think that we get two experienced defensemen who uh, – who are uh, going to form a real, real solid top four with with Zach Wierenski. And, and uh, it's going to be great competition for who's going to be the fourth in that top four. And it's wide open. We got Andrew Beek. We got Adam Boquist. We got David Yuricek. We got Nick Blankenberg, who can compete for that spot. And Jake Bean as well. And, and you know, we got some size and physicality in front of the net with Eric, Eric Goodbrance. And so I, I think we're going to have a real solid deep group. And, and uh, you know, go- scoring goals hasn't been a problem for us. We got some some weapons there. We got young guys that are gonna keep getting better. Cole Sillinger, we expect a huge bounce back from him, and Ken Johnson to continue on the path that he showed uh, in his first and very exciting years as a rookie, as well as Kir- Kirill Marchenko. So, you know, the, the Johnny Goodrose and, and the line is those those guys have been uh, top players in this league for a while now. But uh, we we got we got an exciting forward group and. And we're going to keep building and, and we're going to keep getting better and we're going to get back into the playoffs. And, and uh, you know, our window is going to open here soon when we don't just make the playoffs that we're going to compete to uh, win the Stanley Cup. And that's why we've gone through this painful time now. And, and we're taking our lumps and, 
and trying to stay positive and, and keep keep believing in what we're planning and what we're doing and and uh, you know it's as I've said this many times before that there's not a team on top of the league where um, they didn't have to suffer through this and get some of the top picks in the draft to to make a difference in their core. Um, those top players are only available from right right at the top of the draft and. The Pittsburgh Penguins had a first overall, first overall, second overall before they built their core where they won those Stanley Cups. And, and uh, you know, Tampa Bay drafted uh, Steven Stamkos first overall, uh, uh, Victor Hedman second overall. Col Colorado did the same thing with uh, McKinnon and Cale McCarr where they were in the bottom of the league and got some of the top players in the league right now from there. You have to suffer through that to be able to build. And, and, and now... I think we're fed up with the suffering. We want to take the next step, and, and we want to get moving here. I believe everybody would agree with you on that, fed up with the suffering. So um, enjoy the rest of your time in Buffalo, doing all the evaluating and the work that you're doing there. And I look forward to talking to you again as we get closer to the draft at the end of the month. Thanks, Bobby. Well, the Blue Jackets offseason is in full swing. I'm Bob McElligot, and right now I'm joined by the newest Blue Jackets defenseman, Damon Severson, formerly of the New Jersey Devils, joining the Blue Jackets via trade. And Damon, first of all, welcome to Columbus. We're so happy to have you here. Uh, this process comes to a completion today, but how long has this been going on for you and for your agent where you've been working on figuring out where you're going to play next year and beyond? Uh, it's It's been a little bit on and off. Um Columbus came to the table and they were uh, reached out to New Jersey, trying to get my negotiating rights to my understanding. And um, it was uh, a process that happened fairly quickly. As soon as New Jersey um, granted them permission to speak with my agent and I, and we had uh, a little call with them and they just pretty much had their pitch and, um, you know, recruit in the recruiting process and me being a free agent, I guess that's kind of part of it. First time for me being through something like this and, uh, it was a crazy process. It didn't quite get to free agency, but I was happy when Columbus called and, uh, it was, uh, a great conversation had by all parties involved in, in the one call I did have with them. And, and then really it just came down to negotiating a few things. And, uh, my wife and I chatted about it and, and really it was a no brainer for us for everything that we've heard about the city of Columbus and getting a chance to play for the blue jackets. Uh, we're really excited about that. So you must have been blown away in that pitch, obviously, if you didn't let it get all the way to the free agency. Um, you know, what was there anything specific or what what did the organization, what are they pitching to you about the opportunity that you'll have here to be part of this decor? Yeah, they speak, obviously, to everything. They, they talk about the on-ice stuff, the off-ice stuff, um, family. They, they really didn't miss a beat uh, when, when they spoke about talking about Columbus in itself and everybody that's been there played there, um, you know, their personal experiences and uh, you know, obviously the team struggled last year. That's no secret, but uh, they're looking to build something special there. And um, for me to get a chance to, to be a part of finally getting in the playoffs game with New Jersey this year was a great feeling. And now uh, we're looking to do the same thing in Columbus to turn things around pretty quickly. So um, I couldn't be happier. Obviously things kind of came together pretty quickly here, but once I get uh, the lay of the land and get everything figured out, it, it's, uh, you know, hopefully hit the ground running and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. When you talk about uh, getting into the playoffs with New Jersey this year, uh, it, it is kind of a similar situation here, isn't it? With the Blue Jackets looking to get back into the playoffs, you've already been with a team that has been building and trying to get there and you got that opportunity. What did you get from that experience that you feel that you can bring into this group now to help to get this team back to where it wants to be? Just, uh, you know, obviously it's crazy for me to say I, I'm a veteran now. I've been in the league for a while. So just the veteran presence back there, uh, knowing what I need to do on a day-to-day, night-to-night basis to, to be successful and help the group. And not only on my end of things, but help my teammates as well. And um, just trying to get better uh, every day. And uh, I think we got some great talent in Columbus. And from what I've seen playing against them, things are, are moving in the right direction there. So I'm just going to try to bring my best every day, bring the positive energy, great attitude. Um and just, uh, you know, really look forward to coming to the rink on a day-to-day on -day basis and having to get a chance to live your dream and play play the best game in the world and li really live your dream and, and enjoy that part of it. So and winning cures everything as well. We so looking to win some a lot of hockey games. Yeah, and as you mentioned, you, you are staying within the Metropolitan Division. So this is a team that you played against four times a year. So you do know them. 
Are there any guys that you're really looking forward to being teammates with, or maybe even the D partner with as you sit and you look over the roster? Yeah, obviously I, I see the trade that they made earlier um, with, with Provorov. Obviously I know that uh, Wierenski missed a lot of the year last year with an injury. Uh, so those guys are obviously left-handed, me being a righty. Hopefully I get a chance to pair up with either one of those guys and um, be able to move the puck out of our zone, be able to play in the offensive side of things. But uh you know, obviously up front, they got a sharp shooter in line A. They got a great distributor and playmaker in, in Johnny Gaudreau. And, and he was very close uh, to signing with the Devils last year. So almost got a chance to play with them there. And now I'm following him, his footsteps to Columbus. So uh, there's there's plenty of talent there. Uh, those are the names that first come to mind. And, and uh, you know, getting a chance. I just got a text from Zach Ransky not long ago as well. And it just makes you excited. Uh, you know, new teammates. It's, it's a whole new situation for me. Usually I was on the other end of things, welcoming new teammates in New Jersey. So... This is going to be a little bit different, but I, I can't wait to get uh, get to meet everybody, get going there, and and uh, really start some. Were there any guys that you already know coming into this team? The only guys who I I know are uh, from World Championships a couple of years ago: Cole Sillinger and Kent Johnson. I played with them over there in that team, and we lost the gold medal game. Unfortunately, got a silver that year, but uh, yeah, those are a couple of guys who who I know. And other than that, um, probably no guys through other guys and whatnot and rick nash was uh was over there as well and part of the management group so i know a few people in the columbus organization but uh not a ton so i got a lot of new faces to meet one of your strengths is being a puck moving defenseman so all those guys you were just talking about liney gaudreau kent johnson i mean as a d-man it's looking the puck looking to get the puck out of the zone having those options in front of you not too bad right absolutely that's something that i definitely look forward to and and look at as a as a guy who likes to distribute the puck and, and create opportunities for my teammates and especially guys like that who can put it in the net. So I was fortunate enough to play with guys like Hughes and he's and Jesper Bratt and some of these guys, I put it on their stick and they were able to do the rest. And so I look forward to getting a chance to do that with all the guys you just mentioned as well. As you mentioned, you're leaving the organization, the only organization that you've been with in the national hockey league, and you come in as the new guy for the first time. Have you thought about how you're going to approach that? I mean, some guys come in and they just, they're quiet. They wait to figure things out, and then they move on from there. Other guys, they bring that experience, and they jump right into it. Have you uh, gone through any of that thought process yet of how you're going to handle coming to a new team? A little bit. Uh, not necessarily um, too too crazy yet. Uh, obviously, I knew I was going to be going to a new team here soon. I didn't know where it was going to be, and now it's uh, obviously official with Columbus. So I'm just going to try to be myself. Um, I'm not going to try to do anything that I haven't done before. I, I, I like to be uh, – you know, bring that leadership role as well. I'm not looking to step on anybody's toes or take over anything or change the culture or anything like that. I'm just looking to contribute and, and help uh, build something. And the guys who have been there, I, I was a part of something like that in New Jersey where I'd been there a long time. And there's guys that have been in Columbus for a long time. And there's nothing, no better feeling than being able to turn an organization around and being part of that and uh, feeling like you're part of something special. So um, that's really all I'm looking to bring is, uh, you know, what I've had is experience and, positivity and and really you want to be enjoying yourself going to the rink every day winning is part of that and then just having fun uh, it's all it's all fun hockey's one of the best games in the world and uh it's it's just something to i'm fortunate enough to be able to play it and and to help the columbus organization it is quite the change from being in the greater new york city area to being in central ohio when it comes to a lifestyle in living, you're a Saskatchewan guy. Are you looking forward to uh, kind of getting to a, I don't want to say more quiet thing because there's, there's going to be plenty of you, uh, plenty for you to do uh, in your job and plenty of family things, but uh, have you had the opportunity as a visiting player? I know what you see. You see the hotels, the restaurants and the rink. That's pretty much it. Uh, have you gotten an opportunity to talk to anybody about the city of Columbus yet? Not, not a ton yet, just the really uh, mostly in the conversations with the management group and, and uh, what we had there on the quick call um, a few days ago, just when they gave permission. So um, I haven't had a ton of time. I've done a little bit of research myself, but uh, nothing crazy yet. I'd, I'd like to hear it and see it straight from the source. So um, we're excited to get down there and check things out and enjoy. But uh, being from Saskatchewan and spending my summers now in Kelowna, BC, we, we like the country. We like the you know, that kind of Midwest lifestyle. And and it was cool playing in New Jersey, having New York kind of in your backyard if you wanted to do the hustle and bustle sort of thing. But I'm looking forward to getting a chance to be in there. And that's kind of more my style anyway. So uh, that'll be great. Who's making the decisions on where you're going to live and all that stuff like that? Are you, are you going to try to take a back seat in that? 
it'll, it'll be more a 60 40 and i'll give my wife a 60 percent for sure um we've we've been recommended a few different cities and locations around the columbus area that uh we were supposed to take a look at but we're going to get to that eventually for sure and we we have our certain style we just built a new house out in Kelowna, so we have a certain style we like, and I let her take care of all that stuff just as long as it's easy easy enough access for me to get in and out of the rink in the airport. Yeah, very wise move, of course. Uh, how busy have you been uh, with your phone blowing up from teammates, former teammates, friends, family here ever since the news came out? Yeah, it's been going pretty steady. Um, it's all sorts of fun, different texts I'm getting from former, you know, new teammates, just those guys obviously know my personality being former teammates everyone's just giving me a hard time joking around and you know everyone's looking forward to playing against me this year now and they're just like oh I won't be able to take you seriously on the ice so um yeah it's uh it's fun it's just uh it's a crazy day because yeah it's the news breaks and everyone kind of is like wow they they give you a text right away or give you a call and uh, just say congratulations and then uh then of course the chirps start flying with with the former teammates so um it's great uh i'm looking forward to getting to know a lot of the new guys uh, on the on the columbus team and the organization and uh, i'm looking forward to uh being with them playing against my old squad next year damon thank you very much for carving out a little bit of time for me and for the blue jackets fans today really appreciate it and again Happy to have you here. I think it's going to be very exciting. That uh, that blue line looks completely different here over the course of the last couple of days. Glad you're going to be a big part of it. And best of luck to you. Safe travels on your way to Columbus. Thanks a lot. appreciate you having me on.